bit of a improvised break over our good old friend the tune the song John Henry now I want to take this segment to talk about improvisation now you know I spoke about improvisation in the introduction and about finding your own voice on the banjo so I just wanted to take this time to touch on this subject very early in these lessons so as to get that idea into your head about what improvisation means and the possibilities that are going to start to open up to you as you continue to learn these roles in bluegrass. Now what is improvisation? Improvisation or improvising means taking all the things that you know, all the things that you know about the banjo, all of the things that you know about music, and even your life experience, and putting them into your playing, expressing yourself on the banjo in a spontaneous way. To be able to play on the spot and in the moment whatever you're playing at that given time now whether you're practicing or whether you're jamming at a bluegrass festival somewhere jamming on some tune maybe that you never heard of before to be able to improvise uh, to get your find your way through the song right there on the spot so I'm going to give you a little example of improvisation now I'm going to use just one string in this example because I mentioned about um, playing what you know. Well, let's just assume that we only knew how to play play one string, the first string. We didn't, we're not even going to do any fretting. That's all we know how to play is the first string and D string. Well, you might say to yourself, how am I going to improvise over just one string? Well, I can hit it once, or I can pick it twice. Or I can break it up and play it how I want to. I can hit it hard. Maybe I'm feeling feisty. I can hit it soft. Maybe I'm just chilling and want to hit it mellow. But that in its basic form is what improvising is all about. See, I didn't know what I was going to play on that string until that very moment. So again, it's playing in a spontaneous way, playing what you know at any given moment. Now in bluegrass banjo, you're going to be improvising on what they call licks. Now what is a lick? A lick is built off of a roll. Now since we only know the forward roll so far, that's what I'm going to use in this example. So we remember that we do this forward roll. Now if you also remember that we can use any strings we want to play a forward roll. So in this example, I'm going to play the fifth string with my thumb. I'm going to play the second string with my index finger and I'm going to play the first string with my middle finger. And this roll is going to sound like this. Again, it's just another forward roll on, on just different strings than that first forward roll that we learned. And also, we can start the forward roll on any finger of our right hand. So let me start this forward roll with my index finger and you can hear how that songs. Again, starting on the uh, second string with my index finger. Again, we can start the forward roll on our middle finger. It just sound like this. Okay, so that's a little bit of something that you can uh, practice on a little bit. And again, I'm going to be getting into a lot more of these roles uh, as we go along. But for right now, I just want to tell you how a lick is born. 
So again, we have this forward roll. Now, from the forward roll, we create patterns, okay? And I'm going to be talking about patterns as well. But for this pattern, standard pattern, that you're going to be using quite a lot in bluegrass, is going to consist of this. Picking the second string at your end of X finger of your right hand, and then picking the first string with the middle finger of your right hand, and hitting that twice. So we have this. You just practice doing that, just with those two fingers. Now after that, that combination, we're going to add just that forward roll right after it. So we have this. Again, that's a pattern built off of the forward roll. Again, I'm going to be explaining a lot more of these patterns and rolls as we go along. But from that pattern, now I can incorporate my left hand. I'm not even going to show you how to do this right now, but I just want you to get the idea of how this sounds and how licks are born. So you just listen to all this now. And that's a lick. So a lick is a short musical phrase built from a roll. Again, you start with the roll, you create patterns from the roll, and you create licks from the patterns. Now in bluegrass, you're going to be improvising largely with these licks. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be stringing these licks together to be able to create your solos. You see what I mean? You're going to be learning these standard licks that I'm going to be teaching you. Again, stringing them together and creating your solos. Now, when this style of banjo playing was being born back in the hills of North Carolina some many years ago by people by the name, by the, by the likes of Snuffy Drink Jenkins, a tremendous banjo player for his time. See, they used to play what they call two finger style. And then they started to incorporate that third finger into their playing. And they, they got these rolls, you see. And after that, they, again, they started exploring those rolls on, by them, on themselves and creating these patterns and then these licks. But what I don't want to do is separate the idea of improvising with licks with later on down the road um, improvising with scales and modes and, and the likes. Because again, even though we're playing these roles and licks to improvise from, they're still coming from those same 12 notes that we have to work with in music. So I don't want to separate the two. I want to keep them all under one umbrella. Okay, again, this is down the road, but I just want to get um, that idea of improvising into your head right now and, and very early in these lessons. So, before I go, I'd like to just mention that I had the great fortune of being able to play with the late, great Vassar Clements. Now, Vassar was just an absolute master of improvisation on the fiddle. And uh, I got to know Vassar a little bit by playing gigs with him and uh, having the opportunity to be able to sit down and talk with him at, uh, at different times. And besides being uh, a master musician, he was a master individual. He was one of the greatest person that you would ever want to meet. And he was always filled with encouragement and support of other musicians. So I'd like to leave you um, this segment with that same encouragement that he gave me and many, many other musicians along the way. And just to keep on playing and, and to keep exploring on your own 
And don't be afraid to create new ideas in your playing. And don't be afraid to express your ideas to anybody. Because, uh, again, music is just a, one of the greatest gifts that we have. So I'm going to leave it right there, everybody. And thanks for joining me again. And we'll see you next time right here on musicmoose.org.